By now, you know what Islam looks like. Your common sense didn't betray you. It really is as bad as its reputation. The bad guys haven't been this blatantly obvious since the infamous Nazis of World War II. And with more than a decade between us and 9-11, you'd think we would have learned who our enemy is by now. I mean, we've had Qurans in America for longer than that. And as of 2005, the book Prophet of Doom, Islam's terrorist dogma in Muhammad's own words, has been the most complete and reliable compilation of Quran and Muslim history ever gathered. It's free, and even offered an audio format for those who don't want to read. There is no excuse for our ignorance. Muslims continue to murder a thousand people every month in the name of Allah, and that's not an exaggerated number. Go look up this month's butchery on thereligionofpeace.com. I don't care if the year is 2012 or 1220. It's always like that. Oh, and in case you weren't aware, they're also enriching uranium in Iran. They claim it's for nuclear power, despite being up to their ears in oil, but okay, so what? So you only need 3.5% to run typical civilian power plants. As of March 2012, they're up to 20%, which they claim is for the Tehran medical reactor. UN inspectors recently asked to have a look, but they were denied access. Now, you should know that refining uranium is like getting a freight train started. The process starts out slow, but picks up more and more speed over time. 90% enriched uranium is needed for atomic weapons. While America and the UN are keeping close tabs on Iran, the nation has a bad habit of keeping secrets. The 20% enrichment done in the open could easily carry over to a continued enrichment project done in secret and be finished in a matter of months. Do you trust a nation whose holy book says, in Quran 8 verse 7, wipe the infidels out to the last, or cut off the root of the unbelievers? America is known in the Middle East as the Great Satan. Type in FBI Most Wanted Terrorists if you need a clue as to where a nuclear weapon is most likely to hit us from. The only reason they haven't done it already is because they don't have one, yet. So why the hell aren't we more critical of Islam? Well, first and foremost, we simply don't care. The people who are still making it in this economy think, the crazies are over there on the other side of the ocean, and I'm safe over here. I have my family, my house, my dog, and my white picket fence. I'm living the dream, don't wake me up. The people who aren't making it think, I don't have time to deal with this crap. I've been thrown out of the house, I'm failing school, my boyfriend left me with this baby, and I'm working two jobs, etc, etc. Does that sound about right? We're either too busy cooking burgers and selling clothes, or we're too busy watching movies, downloading music, and playing video games. I admit I'm guilty of this too, but every now and then, I look up from my sandcastle and consider the beach, the bigger picture. Our games and TV shows have bad guys in them, because there are bad guys in the real world that inspire the characterizations. If we have time to watch them, and time to disapprove of them, why aren't we worried about the ones in real life? because of the second enormous reason. Our media lies to us. Oh, Islam is peaceful, even though Muslims fire rockets into Gaza every day. Oh, Islam is misunderstood, even though Muslims have a consistent theme of violence for 14 centuries. Oh, Islam is beautiful, even though the Quran is verbal diarrhea and orders oppression and terror. Why must our presidents continue to telling us not to believe our eyes? Well, journalist Craig Wynn knew W. Bush personally and found out that W. wanted to be a wartime president. He thought it would make him a hero of history. But because he fought with guns and weapons instead of knowledge and truth, Arabs just became more embittered at the U.S. Knowledge would have revealed that Islam celebrates death. If we die, less infidels. If they die, babes in paradise. But no, attack the terrorists, not the doctrine that breeds them. Meanwhile, Obama has a Muslim upbringing, so of course he has sympathies with Islam. And while he needed to side with Israel to uphold American tradition and retain the Jewish vote, he sure wasn't quoting the Quran's ninth surah for the public to hear. So why do he and politicians in general fail to enlighten the public on who we're really fighting? Well, you know what happens to people with the courage to expose Islam. The Dutch cartoonist should have taught you that. Nobody wants to be the next Kennedy. America has allowed itself to be intimidated by bullies. On a side note, I'm exposing Islam because I'm a nobody from nowhere without a face. I'm not important enough to kill. Probably.
Islam's official status as a religion is another thing that saves it from political scrutiny. It's politically incorrect to single out a religion because that would be discriminatory. Muslims also like to cry racist because so many Arabs have been devoured by Islam. But this accusation isn't true. Between lies and accusations of bigotry, a doctrine survives that otherwise wouldn't for stating, Allah commands me to kill you. Conflicting messages on Islam keep the general masses nicely confused about what it actually says. That's the final safety blanket, not knowing the scriptures. When we think of the Quran, I'm sure most of us imagine Arabic scribbles that make about as much sense to us as Greek. And after we translate the Arabic, then we have to unscramble the chronology, and then we have to put the gibberish into historical context, or else we won't understand the full situation. And to do that, we have to rely on Muslim histories from over 200 years after the fact. Which, for all we know, could have been completely made up. Most people would just throw up their hands at this point in frustration and just quit. For even if they got everything right, who would be willing to listen? Experiencing the effects of Islam is sort of like getting a computer virus. You know you have trouble, but you're not sure how to get rid of it because the antivirus isn't working. To go online and research a cure, and all the while, the virus continues to impede your computer's performance. For those of you who aren't tech savvy, I'll make it simpler. Dealing with Islam is like having to clean out a urinal that someone took a dump in. Nobody wants to do it, but it has to be done. And until it gets done, the stench will continue. Islam is worse than a poop-ridden urinal because it is a bringer of death. Again, the one and only reason jihadists don't use nukes on us is because they don't have one yet. When they do, how long will it be until the next 9-11 when Islamic fundamentalists replace planes with nuclear warheads? All it takes is one. Until then, jihadists will simply have to make do with guns and suicide bombers. Think I'm being paranoid? Israel has to live next to them. In no uncertain terms, Israel has promised to attack the nation of Islam before allowing them to have nuclear weapons. They have no choice. They're a one-bomb state, and they don't trust their violent neighbors in the least. If those closest to the Muslim countries don't trust them, why should we?